All right, what's up, everybody? This is um over day 200. I, can't, I don't even know what day it is. I think it's 218 or something. But I'm making the game called Songbringer. And um, yeah, today's goal is going to be to work on getting the items populated throughout the world. So placing them, you know, placing items in the, the stores, placing items with, with the bosses, placing items as um, like... Uh, things you can obtain in the levels, and basically just populating the entire world, whether it's the dungeons over or the overworld, just placing all those items in in strategic locations so that you kind of acquire them and gain your abilities and things like that in this game at the right rate. So doing that randomly and procedurally is a goal. What's up, Arcane? Boogie? What up, guys? I'm good, man. Had a good weekend. Can't wait to get these things done, though. So many things on my list. I just I gotta get all these high-priority things done before the, the, the alpha, or at least most of them done. I probably won't be able to get all those done. What up, Momir? Yo, Asenris, what up? What up, guys? Yeah, so I think the first thing I want to do is... Um, Create an, a vector of items uh, we'll call these a vector of elements uh, no I wasn't I was not busy over the weekend I was um, I was at a wedding this weekend so I wasn't busy with my game or anything but busy with friends I guess yeah it was a good time. It's, uh, it's, yeah, I was at a wedding this weekend. No need to worry. Yeah, I was announcing it before I left that, um, that I'd be gone all weekend. But yeah, <clears throat> I'm back. I'm, I'm weddinged out. All right, yeah, so let's create a vector of elements. Yeah, yeah. It was a good time. Very good time. Probably the best wedding I've ever been to. I mean, it was just so fun and... It's like a three-day event, and yeah, so I'm nice and refreshed, ready to just kick ass on all these high-priority items. The first thing on my high-priority list here is to distribute the items into the stores, levels, and the other secrets based on all the new items in the game and stuff. <laughs> Which one's that? Is it this one? Uh, yeah, so elements, let's push back all the element items so far. So we've got element, fire, ice, poison, lightning, fear. Ah, all right, yeah. Nice one. Nice one. I like this one. That's cool. What's his smile look like? Is it pretty close? <laughs> all right, yeah. So what we're going to do now is um, randomly arrange these. So, yeah, you'll have... All of these items will be available somewhere in the world. Some of these are going to be totally hidden. Some of them you'll be able to purchase, maybe. And then a couple others you'll be able to find. So we're going to arrange, we're going to randomly arrange them so that they get put into these different vectors. Nice. <laughs> what up, fun? Welcome, 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 man. Welcome to the stream. Uh, all right. Uh, kit, 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 kit. Yo, Alex Pita. What's up, man? Welcome back to the stream. Uh, 
So what I'm going to need to do is, I don't, I don't want to modify the DRAND index. So I need to add a function which returns the DRAND index. <laughs> uh, yeah, look at this. Oh, quadruple PC warrior. <laughs> hey, what's up, Ethan? Yeah, so I want to. I don't want to change the world. Basically, if I if I change any of the random numbers, it will change the way worlds come out. So I want to maintain the world, but still be able to do random numbers. So I'm gonna. I'm going to get the DRAND index before I set it in this one method so we can keep it afterwards, just reset it. <laughs> uh. Whoa, look how slowly this is compiling. Man. Nice, man. You started a SoundCloud? Cool. Good for you, dude. I mod num DRAN's log. Yeah, cool. All right, so we got methods now to do that. Let's go to world, and we can randomly arrange these elements. So to randomly arrange elements, we can loop over all of them. Or in i equals zero. i is less than elements that size. No autocomplete while we're... Uh, in the middle of compiling, I guess. Cool, yeah. Good advice from Fung. Side chains are really, really cool. Right on. Yeah, Ethan, definitely check out what uh, Fung's talking about here. Side chaining can really help your music sound good, man. Check out that technique. <clears throat> Yeah, right on. Cool, man. Do you have anything you want to share about it or you want to share it later or what? Feel free to share anytime. Share a screenshot, share what it, links to videos, whatever. Definitely would love to check it out and root for your progress and, you know, tell you you can do it and that kind of stuff. So we're going to just swap random elements here and then we're done so we'll back up the rand index and then reset it. Okay, so just doing that right there, I wanna check if the world has been modified. Yeah. Thanks, Fung. I don't think I've ever checked out your music. Or oh, is this your music? Oh yeah, you made you made music. Cool. Awesome, man. I'll have to check out your stuff later on. Oh, cool. Right on.
Okay, so if this world is still the same, then... Yeah, okay, we'd have the same screen here. We should have like a, a guy up here like that, yeah. All right, this does look like the same world. Uh, one good thing to note would be 9-4. I know there's the harpy at that. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, that's not, what? Oh, 9 point? No, 9-4. I was like, what? What? The world's changed? What? Yeah, okay, cool. Alright, we got the same world. Looks good. So, great. I'm glad that didn't change anything. So now that we've rearranged these elements, we can go and push them back into... You can even make this a function to randomize elements. Let's make it a lambda function for now. I can always go make a templated version later on, but you saw how slow it is to recompile everything with uh, VBS or what's it called? Yeah, VBS, OBS, OBS running right now. So we'll pass in an elements vector. Oh wait, we can do auto, can't we? I think that's possible. Good question. Good question. Nope. Uh, I guess you can't use auto in such a fashion. Is that true? Oh, not a lot on template argument. Can we do this? No, you can't use expected expression. Oh. I don't know. Doesn't really matter that much. You can always make this a template function later. Okay, and now we don't need to do this inside of its own block. All right, so we've got a list of store items. We've got a list of dungeon items. Now we need to fill this up with all the items that are now available in the game. And now we got randomized elements. We should randomize the goal items a little bit too. But not too much. We know I know I want most of them in order. Hmm. It's crazy. Ah, cool. What's up, Frozen Fire? This is uh, C++. Not PHP. Don't listen to it, sons. You try to jump. Okay, so yeah, you can buy life, you can buy cactus, you can't... I guess... Mm, I guess you could buy bomb container 10. 
fire. Yeah, one of the store items is going to be the, one of the elements. The jib stash, you're going to be able to find that. Now we're going to need secret items. Dungeon items, secret items. Cool, man. You've been watching the videos right on. Well, hey, don't don't worry about it being confusing, especially if you're watching all the videos. What you're what you're actually it's happening right now is you're soaking up it all into your subconscious mind, and your subconscious mind is able to process that on a level which you're not quite consciously aware. So by you watching these game dev streams, you're actually learning a lot about the overall process of making games, even if the details seem confusing like programming especially can be confusing you're like what the hell is this what is this see is this what language is this but you know what you're you're actually learning a lot so so good for you man good for you okay so we're not ever going to be able to buy the fear blink that's just crazy Each, okay, so each store has three items. How many stores are there? Oh, and also, wait a minute, stores. Yeah, okay, where's the world width, height, num levels, num refills? Where's the number of stores? Oh, here we go, here's... Secrets, 32 stores, six stores. That's a lot of stores. Hold on a sec. I'm going to get this compiling with the... Um, we got dungeon items, dungeon goal items. Oh, we do have secret items. Yay, we don't have to recompile. Cool, secret items. What up, blood? Welcome, man. I'm working on placing um, items right now into the world. I don't know. I think max overworld stores of six is really a lot. Let's see how many stores we actually have in this overworld. Store? Is it capital S? I think it is. Yeah, capital S is a store. Oh, man. It was great. Yeah. Thanks for asking, dude. It was great. It was so great. Probably the best wedding I've ever been to because it's some of our closest friends and they're like, you know, really close to our age, very much into the same kinds of things. So it was a very cool party. Just done we're extremely well. It's good food, great dancing. Man, it was a good weekend. It was good to catch up with a lot of old friends that I haven't seen in a while. So very refreshing. Now I'm excited to get back here to the game and work especially on getting these high priority items done you know especially these ones about items and overworld stuff you know all these are really important things that I would love to be able to have done by the end of the month but I don't know if that's gonna happen so fast but maybe I can get half of them done I don't know we'll see so um, here we go okay store items Okay, we shouldn't be able to find, definitely shouldn't be able to find the blink. Shouldn't be able to find two bomb containers. We've only got enough for three, three stores. So I guess we need more. This is a secret item here for sure. Jib stash, secret items. Let's put this up here. Secret items. What else is a secret item? One of the elements is going to be a secret item. Secret 
items, pushback, elements, one. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Probably, man. I usually can I usually can do one all nighter. And that one and then after that I'm just spent, you know. So yeah, probably at the very end, right before I release this alpha version, I'll be doing like an all nighter and then three or four things will get done. But that will be a lot for one day. Four item four high priority items is typically a lot. I guess it depends. It totally depends on which one you do, but okay. So we got secret items. We need some more store items too, of course. Uh, and dungeon items, of course. Dungeon items and goal items. What up, up, Gene? Three in a row? Oh, uh, you should. Oh, just do three all nighters in a row. Is that what you're saying? That sounds hard. While streaming them all? <laughs> uh, my fan situation is so hot. Oh, I know, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, when I was a teenager, I could easily pull all nighters, like on a weekend, even. Just. Or, you know, during the week, even. But now. Dude, yeah, it kills me for like the next day or two. I'm just, I'm just toast. Unless all I have to do is play the game or or something easy, or make art, you know. That that's just like, that's some nice stuff to do after pulling a nine at all nighter. So one of the secrets we're gonna have to split up. Oh, we need hard containers. Art containers. These are a lot of these are. Um, it's a life container Q. Is that it? Yeah, Q. We got Q1 through Q8. So there's a lot of these. Q1, two, three, four. Four of these. These can be like secret items. That will be one whole heart if you can find all those. Oh yeah. You have to have someone there to help, like help you stay up, like playing the symbols. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of agree, you know. I think in the long term, it's just the best way to do it is just stick with your own schedule. Because then you're not killing the next day, day and a half worth of productivity. But I guess if you have a huge deadline, like I kind of do with this alpha release, then... It can be a benefit, possibly. Okay, there's the bomb container for sure is one of the secrets. Bomb container 11. How many is... We got two more bomb containers that could possibly go in this world. Might as well put them both in the, in the secrets. Ah. All right, um dungeon goal items. Put a bunch of these in here. Um, blink is one of the items, and these ah, these should kind of be randomly arranged, maybe, or maybe partially randomly arranged. Uh, it says why the K before names. It's actually a naming convention that came from Objective C for naming constants, and I guess the engine I'm using is um, is Cocos 2DX, and they typically do that. So I guess I kind of took their style, which I think this came from somewhere else before that. But some people do C, like you could do C item, blah, 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 blah. But yeah, so I've just kind of stuck with K ever since my Objective-C days. Should probably sh switch that up and do something cooler. All right, Blink's a sweet one. Ghost Sword, 
Ghost Sword should even go before that. Ghost Sword, Blink. Yeah, exactly. It's K for K constant with a K K. Yeah. I'm going to K Kappa. Ghost Sword, Blink. What else we got for like these major items that you want to find from a boss? Helmets, boots, glove, those things are big. Top hat, I think you're going to get from a mini boss. What up, love? Love music. Oh, dang. Yeah. Oh, man, that sucks. Yeah, lots of people heard that idea, guys. Yeah. And how do you know? I don't know. How do you know if the guy's just all talk, no no do? Well, I guess you find at least you found out fast. That's good. You know. I mean a month is not is still sucks to lose kind of a month, but like at least it wasn't a year. So I think we're still we still don't have enough items. Helmet, boots, and glove are really the only things besides the ghost sword and the blink. How many items do we need? One, two, three, four, five. We need one more. So. All right, well, we can give another life container quarter. But these are kind of cool to put as secrets. Bomb containers are already in the levels. Life containers are already in the levels. Uh, I guess we're going to have to do one of the elements. We're only using, well, I guess we could do... All, Three elements, even. Zero, one, two. Okay, so we need one more item. What's this going to be? Oh. Well, yeah, you never know. I mean... It sounds like, you know, if he, he sounds like he could be making excuses too. I don't know. I have no idea. But yeah, I guess, I guess, you know, just keep on going, man. Keep making music. Keep on finding other people to make music for. Okay, let's do. It kind of sucks to put a life container quarter as one of the items you could get from a boss because maybe okay maybe the last dungeon you get some super freaking awesome item or like a an item that um, applies to the plot or something like that. What up, Pete and Wally? Okay, I'm gonna do this. Um, I'm gonna break these dungeon items up a little bit like this. So it's gonna go um, item type, vector of item types. Uh, like first items, these are the, the items that you want to be in the first dungeons, right? And 
And these are the second dungeon items. So these are like the secondary. Oh, and let's call these not first, but primary and secondary. Oh, that would be so sweet. Oh. Oh my god. I gotta add this ideas list. Sweet idea, Azenris. Among many great ideas, Azenris has added to this list. Yes, please, yeah. You should put out your SoundCloud or something you have. That's a great way to uh, kind of, you know, share what you're doing. Allow people, allow people to check you out and see if you're a match for them first, you know. Okay, so primary dungeon items. Can we just do a list like that? Ghost sword. Yeah, nice. That's cool. And then secondary items are going to be helmet, boots, glove, elements. Leaves and blues make my ear smile. Nice. Cool, man. You got it. You got your music up here somewhere? Oh, here you are. There you are. SoundCloud. Right on, man. I'll check you out. I'll check you out for sure. So we're, we're going to push back the rest of the remaining elements in uh, uh, the elements array. So secondary dungeon items, I push back elements. I. Nice, right on. You guys sound of music in your game blood. Sweet, dude. Good progress. Ooh, I like the concept. This seems this gives me the earthbound vibe. Very earthboundy. Yeah. Doodle doodle doo doo. Okay, so now we've got these things filled up. We can go randomize elements on the primary dungeon items. And the secondary dungeon items, and then we can just throw them back into the dungeon.
So for each one of the levels, Nice, man. Pierre, what's up, Pierre? Hey, what up, Clock? Uh, you been busy? Cool, man. I've been busy, too, but I've been busy at a wedding this weekend. What up, Skip Zero? <laughs> That's me. I'm the stand-up and code guy. Ooh, I like it. Cool, doll. Oh, doesn't it? Isn't that great, Vlad? Blood? Put, put all these little sound effects. Things are getting more juicy. I'm telling you, man. Adding some more juice elements will really help. Like uh, a tiny bit of screen shake, a little bit of delay, um, more particles. Oh, I see you added some particles to the ice. Oh, look at that. Yo, wow, 14 minutes before deadline. Dev life, for sure. Alright, now we got dungeon goal items dot pushback. Primary dungeon items. I guess we should do an iterator. Yeah, yeah, exactly. One step at a time. Oh man, this all this is all worthless. We don't need to do any of this. For auto item I in primary dungeon items, dungeon goal items that push back. Item. That's all we need. Do this for both of these secondary. There. All right, all right, so there we go. Now we got some dungeon items. Well, wait, don't need this anymore. Now we don't have any more dungeon items themselves, so that's gonna be something. Cool, right on, man, good luck. Good for you. Making your portfolio better and looking more professional. All right, so here's where it's, it's creating the dungeon Z and this is where it pushes back a life container. Oh, and this is a destructive array. Okay, so it's erasing a dungeon goal item each time. Yeah. There's also the map, the compass, and bomb container that you can obtain in every uh, dungeon. 
And then, okay, so yeah, it doesn't need to have dungeon items to succeed in creating the dungeon. So that's good. Okay, so we don't need to we don't need to worry about this whole dungeon items array anymore. But now we do need to use the um, the maze. The maze has items for secrets and stores. Here we go. Oh, oh. Yeah, secrets used to be really lame. Oh, you got another one. Cool. I'll have to check this one out too. Hello, music. Cool, dude. Cool logo and stuff. I love this, man. This is rad. Oh yeah, here's where it pushes back store items. But this is wrong, this whole... Oh, right, right, right. So this is just pushing back a bunch of diamonds. We don't want to do that. We do want to have a bunch of random diamond items that you can get, though. So I needed to start creating those. Okay, items. So this is going to be like, um... We'll call it Diamond Stash 1 through 16, maybe. Nice, right on. Dust Force. Hey, actually, this isn't a high priority item I can get crossed off my list. I'm just doing this. That's cool. 13, 14, 15. And 16. Bam. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay. Um, yeah, let's, cross, let's get that compiling so we've got those to be able to use. Will Songbringer have a trade quest? What's that? Like a quest where you trade stuff? Or, or what is that exactly? Uh, we now need to hook these up into the items. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, it's um, it's really hard. In fact, I think there already are some, and there will probably be a lot more once I do the ideas. And like one of the ideas on this list was like. Uh, Jib turns into Darth Vader or something like that. You know, it's like there's there's no way I'm gonna not put pop culture pop culture references in. the The goal though is to try and keep them subtle enough where it's stylish. You know, it's still like cool. Oh, oh, that kind of trade quest. So you trade your hat, you get a scarf, you get a seashell, you get a glove, you get a book, you get the ultra sword. You know what? That's totally possible. Yeah, Jib is your father. Yeah, that's that's we were like Jib should be Darth Vader and should be your father. Um Yeah, yeah, ex exactly. Don't get sued by Disney. Yeah. <laughs> no, father. Don't chop my arm off. Oh. Yeah, Peen Wally, this is totally possible. Because I've already got a crafting system in here, right? So you would craft 
whatever into something else, into something else, into something else that, that gives you something else. So yeah, there could be that. In fact, I think I'll put it on the list just to make sure that it's, it's one of those things that like is on the list. Okay, yeah, now it's, let's, uh, we got this compiling so we can go and create all these um, diamond stashes. Diamond stash. Autocomplete still not working? What's up with that? Nice. I had in time. I think I've seen Dust Force, right? I don't know. I've, I think I've seen Dust Force. Sweet. This looks pretty cool. I'm gonna add this on one of my wish lists. I haven't ever. I haven't played this one. Okay, and then you said a hat in time. Diamond stash. Why isn't it like this? It will not auto complete. Well, oh, this is why my computer is going really hard. Cool. Is it? It looked like it, right? Is that why they call it Dust Force? Diamonds, we're going to make these white. You only have one of these. No properties, but let's give them a, a price, and the price will actually be the amount of diamonds in that stash. I'm thinking we'll just do 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, all that. Messed up my rhythm. All right, yeah, let's see 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Cool. There. There, 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 there. Was I? Was it? It probably was messing up totally, wasn't it? We got some drop frames. Doesn't look up it. No drop frames. That part's good. <laughs> cool. Okay, yeah, I think these are good enough. 
now we can um, we'll be able to use them and everything yeah okay so now we can go in the world and we can push all those back into different uh, secret items Back. Let's just do hmm. You would need, oh man, you need a constant for this. I really don't feel like recombining. Dude, I gotta get an ice pack. This computer is so hot right now. I don't know what's up with it. Still going. What's up with you, computer? You're so hot today. Well, it's definitely a bit wonky, but mm. Mm. <laughs> right, Sage. Right. I wish it was just that, but I think it has something to do with Open Broadcaster. Something. All right, K world num life container quarters. Man, that's long. It's a bit too long, right? Jeez. Really, X split? Yeah. Well, there's the, there's that fan on my computer, and there's also a fan in the corner that's running. So there might be a bit of noise today. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I, I've told this story many times, but the first video game I ever wrote was all in one file, one file for an entire video game, and um, it was totally spaghetti. Spaghetti as hell. It was so bad that I'm pretty sure I subconsciously forgot to save it on my computer at some point and just lost all the original source code. Really? Uh, it's not bad? Okay, oh, the noise isn't bad. Yeah, longer, oh my god. Especially with unit tests, right? Okay, so let's cast this to an item type. And there, we've got all the life quarters instead of doing them. Here, let's just put that kind of more like that. So now let's push back all of those. Um... Oh man, we would need another one of these too. K world um, num diamond stashes. Yeah, oh, at least it was more than one function. Thank God. Yeah, there was more than one function, but it was definitely spaghetti. So spaghetti. <laughs> uh, that's... I guess that logic makes sense, right? Okay, okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and bite the bullet and compile again. Because I need these as constants.
Mm, craftables, save games. Just trying to organize these to be more and more organized. Actually, all of these kind of need to be more. These are more important things. They need to go up here. Or maybe not. I can't make up my mind. Oh well, let's compile that. Yes, right. That's where I that's where I learned. I learned Q basic and then that's and then when I next learned C, I, I took all my Q basic stuff I'd learned and put it into the C language and then I finally learned, oh my gosh, C and Q basic are totally different. <laughs> x86 assembly dude that's amazing it's amazing you made that in assembly whoa so oh, it's so sweet uh -huh. hey Grim Gary what's up man <laughs> yeah I did Q basic ruined me for the first year I was like I guess everything has to be in the same file right it's just how it goes in the programming world. Put it all in one file. What's a function? A function. All right, now let's push back all the number of diamond stashes. Diamond stashes. Uh, secret items push back. Item type. Okay, item. Diamond stash one plus I there. Let's throw the jib stash at the end here. And now we've got secret items all like that. We can randomize all of the elements for the secret items. There. Now all now all we've got to do is just apply them. We don't need those thinking functions. <laughs> MC Finest Gold, yes, you're right. This is C++. Good call, man. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah, and we don't need this anymore either. Okay, cool. So now we've got some, some nice randomized secret items, and we've got new types of items we can, are called diamond stashes, which allow us basically... Basically, when you find a secret and it has a bunch of diamonds in it, you're going to be able to to save the fact that you obtained those that diamond stash. So that you go in the secret cave, you get all those secret diamonds, you come out of the cave, and when you go back in the cave, you um, you can't get it again. So that's what that's going to do. All right, so now we were, I know we're using the store items already. So the next thing to do is to start using the secret items, and then we're ready to start testing. Uh, MC Finest Gold, yeah. Panic VR, why is my code flashing? You mean when it does this? What are you talking about, flashing? But yeah, MC Finest Gold, I'll, I'll show you the game before I finish this code, so yeah. Let me get it going. That should be compiled. Yeah, we're good to go. Let's check it out. This game's called Songbringer, and it's a game, um, it's a sci-fi Zelda-like game, but it's procedurally generated. So when you start this game, you get six letters that you, you can put together a world with those six letters. So for example, um, let me show you the actual so this is the current world, right? This is the world Dingle. I just entered six letters, got, you know, I chose the word Dingle. And this is the world it generated based on the letters Dingle, right? It's a lot like Zelda 1. So that's the main inspiration for this game. And you can tell from this map that it's very Zelda 1-esque. So this is the home screen right here, this pink screen. There's two lakes, there's a mountains, there's a desert, the green parts are forest. So when um so yeah so you you procedurally generated world 
and lots of items and stuff like that. Um, you have a sword. You have other items. This, I have a I have crafted items too, so you can craft items. That's pretty cool. So like you can um, you can go back to your ship and craft items. Let's see if I can just kill all the enemies on one screen. I can go back to my ship and show you. So you can go back to your ship Songbringer and craft stuff. And there's an overworld, there's dungeons. You know, it's just basically Zelda 1, but procedural and crafting. So yeah, here's your, your item crafter dude. He's on your ship. And if you give him two items that are able to be crafted together, like for example, if I want to craft the, the top hat with poison, I can get the poison top hat. So, and then there's going to be more screens here on your on your um, ship, more than just like this item crafter dude. There's a bunch of other stuff you'll be able to explore on your ship. Um, and then, of course, nine dungeons and an overworld the size of Zelda 1, and, you know, that's basically it. So, let's warp back to, and I'll show you some more stuff in the world. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's trying to help. <laughs> I'm not sure where Dungeon 1 is in this world. But I think I know where Dungeon 2 is. But yeah, you get a you get a you get the point for what this game is kind of like, right? And you'll see a lot more of it as I develop it and stuff and start running the game and testing the code I'm just writing. So there you go. There you go, man. Poison drones, yep. Uh, well, no, it's it's not the poison hat because it's not technically a hat you're getting. You're getting you're getting these drones that allow you to throw things. So you've actually, you basically just put the drones inside your hat. Ooh, build immunity to take deadly toxins. That would be a cool item. Uh, if you forget to pick up an item, it just gives it back to you in your inventory. So yeah, there's there's no worries about accidentally leaving items there. Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll do a better job of explaining that too. So when you first get the, the drones, um, you'll be able to... It'll, it'll, you'll fight an enemy that actually is using the drones. And then you basically steal the drones from them. So it, it should be kind of... A little clearer when it's actually put in the game of the context of the game. So okay, now we just need to use secret items. Here. You can complete them in any order. There's definitely not linearity in this game. That's one of the things that I hate the most in video games is linearity. Having being limited in your choices, I, I think some limitations are, are important, right? Like you need some gates. Like think of Super Metroid or whatever, where you can kind of go in any direction, but you can't quite get to the whole world just yet. It's I want that feeling. Same as Zelda One. Um, so you you just you get the feeling that you can head in any direction. You technically you could go to just about all the levels or complete them in any order you want. Um, but yeah, there'll be some gates like like you'll there'll be a gate where you can't quite get to level six through nine or whatever um, From the if you're at the very beginning of the game You can't quite get to dungeons four through six or whatever without this other item stuff like that But yeah, I definitely I despise linearity. I love openness the feeling that you have much choice in your game and the path that you take Cool. Okay, secrets. This is, uh, we don't need this N anymore.
All right, this is really easy. We just want to go items that push back, secret items that front, and then secret items that erase the front item. Items that push back, secret items, secret items that erase, secret items that begin. Cool. Okay, that that should do it. Now. Now we need some bombs and we need some cactuses so we can test out these secrets. So let's go put the player everywhere there are secrets. In fact, okay, there's the S. Let's try out those two first. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Five zero is going to be a secret place. Possibly. Let's see if it even worked. What happened? Oh, I guess that has to be if. Man, slow computer today. Secret items the size is greater than zero, then we can do all this. Oh, Sage. Sweet, man. Thanks for following me on Twitter. Yeah, so where would the secret be on this level? I don't think it's even here. But let's eat a cactus and see if it reveals anything. Yeah. Oh, there. <laughs> it put the secret out there in the middle of the water. Because. Oh, because there was land here. Yeah, there was some rocks here, but then it got covered up with water. Okay, so that's a bug. We need to be able to. I need to add that to the ideas list and fix that. Um, in fact, this is kind of a, a high priority here. So, secrets. All right, there, so we got that listed. Let's just go around until we find an area that actually works. <laughs> the more someone codes, the crappier their computer is. Oh man, gosh, that's so true, right? I agree, I tend to agree. So the most coding I ever did was on this laptop and it's one of the crappiest ones. This is from 2008 and I actually used this up to um, 2014, I was using this freaking laptop. What's that, six years? That's a long lifetime for a computer. Swim, you gotta swim to it. Yeah, yeah, Gein, that's what cactuses do. They, they give you trippy psychedelic powers. You can see secret walls and you also are invincible for a short time. Uh, okay, so let's go to another secret area and let's just find one that works and then we can test if, it, if the item worked inside it. Like for example, that might work, 710. Wait, 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 did I list? No. Let's go back, 710. All right, cool, we got one that works. Let's 
So let's put a bomb down here. Do I not have any bombs? Oh, I got the fire bomb. Oh, wait, there's a bomb. Bomb cube. All right. So place a bomb here. Run away! Oh, that messed up. Oh, wow, I put it on one of these kind of item things. Oh, uh, what happened? Crash and burn! Really? That's cool. Oh, yeah, the text effect? Yeah. That's right. Suicidal slimes jumping in front of my sword. Um, okay, what, what what happened here? Oh, it's creating an item and it's failing because the frame doesn't exist. What's it creating? Um, what is it creating? Life container Q. Oh. Yeah, these don't exist yet. Okay, we gotta add this. Yeah, that's, that might be a part of it. More distractions. Right? All right, um, we, need, we need a picture for the live quarters. That's not that hard. Let's add, we already got a picture for the big, these big ones. Let's add a quarter one. Stash. Cool. All right, let's duplicate this one, create a quarter. These are called life container. These should be called life. Life. Life container Q. All right, and then we'll make it into a quarter. All right, that might be good, might be bad, I'm not sure, but I'm just gonna put it in the game as it is right now. I'll refine it later. All user slices, when you put this in sheets, HUD. Now that shouldn't crash this time. Wanna live. Run for my bomb, you want to do it? Oh, yeah! That's weird. The player suddenly appears. I gotta write that down. That's important. Ah, uh, yes, yes! Awesome movie. So, wow, where do I put this? Oh, yeah, let's put this. This is kind of a low priority item. Um, walking down into secret stairs player is occluded by black thing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know, I know, yeah, that, that kind of does, but yeah, I know what you mean, totally. That's why I, I can't bring myself to get rid of this computer. I put so, yeah, put so many years into typing on it and stuff. 
Yeah, totally. Yeah, if you know where it, a secret is, or if you just want to guess, or if you don't have any cactuses, you can still blow up secrets. Yeah. Bomb only playthrough ink, huh? Oh yeah. All your computers get stolen. Oh, that sucks. Okay, so now let's see if this works. Cool. We have no description for this item. What is it? I don't know. Nobody knows. Yeah. Yep. It's pretty cool. And there's all those things like um, Backblaze, for example. You can get this thing called Backblaze. It's like five bucks a month and it backs up your entire computer online. That's pretty cool. I used to have that when I lived on a boat. I was like, man, if my boat ever sinks, I don't want to lose all my code. So I had Backblaze for a while. That was pretty cool. It's an atomic shark tooth. <laughs> kind of. Ah. Hello, welcome to the stream. Sixillo. Sixillo? Alright, we need a description for these. These live quarters. Pirate foo. Here we go. All right. So item. Um, item diamond stash. Oh, in this um one. We need a get key function that actually is. Yeah, I lived on a boat. It was yeah. I guess you could say it was in the Pacific, but really it was just in a in in a harbor. So no, I, didn't, I never really went out of the harbor that much, and my boat actually didn't even move. My boat was basically just a floating apartment. Duty Ba, what's up? You used to code on a boat? Really? Oh, I, I used to code on a boat. Yeah. I was coding on a boat. Yeah. Okay, so gear component, uh, get item key, I believe is the function we're looking for. No, not key. Get, I get, yeah, get text key. This is it. So re, we reuse text for a lot of these items. So we run a reuse text for diamond stashes. Gear component is... Uh, we'll cap copy this. Um, yeah, legendary items. Cool. You've been making a game. What what kind of game? What you working on? You got any screenshots you want to share? K world num diamond stashes. There we go. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Cool idea, extreme coding reality TV. Code while skydiving. Oh my god, I like that. But you can you only get like 30 seconds to do something, right? River rafting? That's gonna be crazy hard. Getting all wet. Getting chased by hungry dogs. <laughs> Code in the alley of a bad neighborhood. 
Ah, oh, Grim Gary. Ah, oh, kinda. Ah, oh, thanks, man. Uh, <laughs> what up, professional novice? Welcome to the stream, man. So all we need now is a stash, some stash text. We should be able to be, yeah, here we go. Um, nice. Right on, cool, man. That's awesome. It takes place in your very school. Alright, let's see if that works. Let's see. Oh, this isn't the diamond stash, this is the quarter. After all that. <laughs> okay, anyways, we need life quarter. Oh, and the same thing, same kind of thing as the other... Uh, Thing we just did for the component we need to be able to do multiple life quarters reuse text for container quarters life container q1 oh no Oh! Help us! There, so now we got a container quarter and a container stash. We're using the text for all those. And we can go Collect four to fuse a new another demon's tooth. All right, let's see that work. Wait, hold on, one more thing. Life container quarter. We need to make sure that's. Yeah, yeah, life container Q1, okay. So, now I'm gonna go bomb that same place, go down in the secret, grab the secret item. What did you miss up here? Oh. Oh my god. So I had semicolons right after these. Very, very bad. Can't believe that. What a new mistake. I'm a noob. N E W B. Oh, hey, it worked that time. With him walking down the stairs, he wasn't all black. That was weird. All right, we got it. Diamond stash? No, it's not a diamond stash. Oh, what 
did I do wrong? Oh, why, did I mix them up? No wonder. Alright, okay. Let's check this over. Life container Q1. Uh, this is less. This is, whoops. Wait, oh man. This is supposed to be Diamond Stash 1. Diamond Stash 1, Diamond Stash 1, World Number Diamond Stashes, Diamond Stash 1. Alright. This one should be Life Container Q1. Life Container Q1 plus Q1, Q1, Q1. Okay. Let's try that again. And then we need a we need a better container for these, or maybe not even a container. Actually, let's do that first. Let's make it so there's no container for these items. Oh, this is not it. It's um create items. Contained So we're not going to put things in a container if this is a secret Z so Area pause dot z is greater than or no less than or equal to k. Secret z no. What the heck? Okay, first I think it's k first. Secret z. There we go. And area pause dot z is greater than or equal to k first secret z minus k world num. Secrets? There's a max num secrets. Oh, um, can't can't type max. No. Secrets. How many secrets do we have? Okay, max. Overworld secrets. That should be world. There we go. I know. Too many variables, too little conventions. You can see I went without the convention of prefixing that with the word world, and now I'm like, it got me confused. So I should I should re redo that right now after I do this test here. Cool. All right, now we got the item just sitting there. Sweet. Yay, this works. Now, okay, one more thing I want to do is I want to make this look like a cooler cave. I like this cave design that has, um, it looks more like a diamond shape. So area patterns, pattern cave. And I just did this for that other function. So I should be creating a method. Where were you able to download from Steam? Let me get you the link. You can also pre-order. 
So there's song you can pre-order if you want to get, get your name on the credits. So and on the main menu. So if you want to pre-order, same thing. But also you can get it on Steam. There's the Steam link. Yeah, here. Alright, so there we got his Secret Z, and then we're, we need to do before we set the style. I think zero is the cool one. Let's hope that works. So anyways, now we'll bomb it again, and this time it should be a diamond shape, and it'll have the item there in the middle of the floor, so that should be pretty cool. Maybe you should have a little dais too, or something like that, to throw the item on. Yeah, dais would be sweet. Yeah, but I like this shape better, that's cool. Yeah, a dais would really help it kind of um, like, you know, denote the fact that there's something special there. In fact, let's do a cool, let's do a quick little dais for that. Yeah, it's already in the info. It's already there, man. If you click on the info, it's all there. Are you talking about the info for this Twitch stream? If you are, it's there. And let, I don't know. If are you clicking info and it's not there? If we did. Oh, okay, cool. Right on. Uh Man, this is a super janky way to do this, but I could I could just simply put a dais in the middle of everything. Um, it's the same thing as the sword. Sword has this big old. There it is, Deus. It's just Deus. What's up, Vedic? Yeah, it's C++, man. C++. Good call. Nice. 
Most people guess C sharp or Java, but you guessed right. Good job, man. So here, we'll create a little deus entity to hold the items, if it's a secret. And position, we're going to do the middle of the screen. So, we oh, just do area size dot width. All right, let's see if that works. What do I prefer? I prefer C++. Uh, there's lots of benefits to both styles of language, you know. Java is a little bit higher level, so it's a little bit easier to use, and it's just a little more friendly, and has some cool features that C++ doesn't. C++ is a little more um, portable and a little faster, and um, those, are, those are its biggest strengths, its portability and its speed. Sort of like driving a, an automatic transmission car versus a manual transmission car. All right, so it put a dais in here, but it didn't put it at the right place, so. And it shouldn't look like that same sword dais. So, I'll draw another one. But I wanted to see if this sort of, this general style of deus is the right thing to use for these. I guess at this point I shouldn't be bombing this every time. I should just set the player Z inside this thing. There. Cool. All the items sit in the middle. Let's save here. And we'll make a custom dais for these guys. <clears throat> Alright, Pete and Wally. Night, man. Um, secret, uh, sprites, backgrounds, I think I'm going to be sword. Deus, there it is, Deus. All right, so let's make a dais too. We'll put this one as a common dais. Uh, I Asian, yes, there is already an autosave feature. This um, this whole thing I did there just to quit was a custom thing for the de for the debug mode, anyways, because um. When you save your game, it doesn't always save your place. It's exactly like Zelda 1, where if you save your game and leave the game or whatever, you have to start over back at the home screen or back at the very first part of a level or a dungeon. So it's a lot like that. It auto-saves for you whenever you go into a dungeon, whenever you come out of a dungeon, and also when other key things happen. And otherwise, your manual save and quit is a lot like Zelda 1. So, good question. 
Oh, see, I'm thinking this thing should be about half the size, but first of all, it shouldn't have this little circle-y thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can't just save and then really continue again with three hearts instead of one or whatever. Yeah. What happened to my cursor? Oh, there it goes. What? Oh, there. Hold. Oh, it's that thing. All right, let's turn that off. Turn that back on and Okay, I got an idea. Let's go half the size about, let's see, I'll start with half size. Um, oh, how many people have pre-ordered, including from the Kickstarter? Uh, about 800 so far. And the Kickstarter did like 750. So that just shows you how awesome Kickstarter is. Like 750 people found this game and pre-ordered it, enabled me to finish this game. Thank you again, Kickstarter backers. Uh, but yeah, since then, maybe 50 to 100. I'm not sure if it's even close to 100 yet. But yeah, at least 50 people have pre-ordered. Still, it's not that much compared to the Kickstarter. And it's really, ha it's, I wish I could, I don't know, I wish it could be more. I wish I could find a way to, for it to be more. Because then I could push back releasing it a little bit. You know, but it, as it stands, pretty much January is going to be the release. The first release. And then it'll be lots and lots of free updates as as previously mentioned. So, but anyways, that very first release is kind of important because that's when people are gonna write reviews about it and stuff. So that first release creates a first impression and that first impression is pretty important. So that's why I wish I could push it back even just two and a half months or three months to like March. That would be my ideal launch date. Uh, it's $16 if you wanna pre-order the game. And that includes the soundtrack. And pre-ordering also gets you your name on the main menu. Oh, need that. Yeah, let's try. Okay, I'm going to save this and then try half size. Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah, I hope. Yeah, I hope this Steam release is really successful because that's what will give me the funds to be able to continue developing it at, a, at a, an aggressive pace, like I have been. So yeah, when it's it's going to be released in January, but there's a whole another year I'm planning to put into free updates and also porting it to other platforms like at least iOS, possibly Android, PlayStation Four, and Xbox One. So that's that year. And also Retro VGS if it succeeds. We'll see. Their Kickstarter just launched, or their Indiegogo crowdfunding campaign just launched. So we'll see how well Retro VGS does. It's such a rad system. I mean, the, the idea behind it is awesome. We'll see if it's, you know, if it's well executed or not. We'll see. Oh, yeah, Grim Gary. I will be doing tons of PR push for um, all three of these upcoming releases. So there's an alpha coming out this month, beta is coming out November, and then the final version, or the first release basically will be January. And yeah, I'm doing a PR approach for every one of them. And basically all I really have is a, a list of people to contact and, and YouTubers, and also as well as websites and stuff like that. But I just keep a list of, um, I got a list of my backers, but I also got a list of press contacts so I basically just have, you know, um, their name, their email, maybe their website, their Twitter handle, and if they've written a review about my game so far or done a YouTube video about them. So, yeah, I keep track of all that, and, yeah, I'll be doing some pushes. And those take a long time. 
Gosh, that took me one time. I the last time I did one of these, I stayed up all night contacting the press. Like it was because I wrote a an individual email for each one of them. So that's why it took so long. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and that's why I'm really excited that so many YouTubers have reached out to me already and been like, "Hey, I can't wait to play your game. Can you get me a an alpha copy or a beta copy so that I can review it and do a YouTube video of it?" So, yeah. Cool. Yeah, Grim Gary, please send him my send him my info. Send him um you can you can send him my email or my Twitter handle or whatever, but if you, if you want my email, here's my email. Matt at wizardfood.com. So that's me. Thanks, man. Pre much appreciated. Much appreciated, yeah. So, yeah, let's save out this day as two. Two. And then we'll put it there and let's see what it, lo what it looks like. So basically what I do with art a lot of the times is I first I dial in proportions. So I took an existing art asset, scaled it half as big. I'm seeing if that proportion, that size is, is right. What up Unreal? Thanks man. <laughs> Are you saying that because I have an email that has wizard in it? It's true, it's proof. It's proof, I really have a wizard. Okay, I think that could be about the right size. Let's make sure it's not as big there. And let's also turn back on that, make it a little more brown. Uh, Vedic, uh, yes, in the sense that I have you guys sharing tons of ideas and as well giving feedback directly on the game. But if you're talking about actual direct help, no, I'm the only one doing everything. I do the programming, the art, the music, the business, the marketing, and all that stuff, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Huh? RDJ, who's that? Okay, let's see if that looked better with um, it brown and not as small or not as uh, not as at that same position. I want it to line up right with the same position of the item. Yes, no, it's real. It's real, man. Oh, Robert Downey Jr. What's up? Space my name. RDJ, that's me. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm starting to think this is a bit small this little platform and or maybe it's just a little too needs to go a little maybe three more pixels lower yeah but I was saying there is it's it's really nice to have the help of you guys on the live stream providing like for example when I did the Kickstarter you guys were providing some of the best feedback ever on you know on the, the Kickstarter page and stuff like that and daily you guys help out with feedback like you know maybe you should do this with that item or this look or whatever and all that feedback has really helped shape the game into a better game every day so I'm very thankful very thankful for for all your guys' interest and everything oh you have to ask Oh, yeah, what do I prefer to be called? I guess Nathaniel in general, but Nat is also another thing, or Nate. Basically, I prefer to be called anything but Nathan. So, yeah, Nate, Nat, Nathaniel, any of those. Or just Robert Downey Jr. works. <laughs> uh, I'm joking because I guess it doesn't really matter to me that much what I'm called. Uh, is it an efficient game? Yes, it's an efficient game. It doesn't use a doesn't use much CPU. You're seeing me develop this game while running a very resource intensive app called OBS to live stream. This thing uses it doesn't just use 27% of CPU. It actually uses 100% of one of my CPUs. So I have to make this game efficient to be able to even run it and live stream it. 
Oh, no worries, no worries. Oh, I mean, you know, I guess because it doesn't bug me that much. I don't know. I don't know. What is wrong with Nathan? I don't know. Maybe when I was a kid, someone called me Nathan at a bad moment or something. I don't know. But yeah, I usually go by Nat. <laughs> yes. All right, let's try this um a little less small. So we'll go image size. So last time we did 76. Let's do 111. And here we'll do 20, 20 something, 20 something. Yeah, so I think what I'll do is I'll do like a layered, almost like a a wedding cake type thing for this platform. Yeah, let's do that. Let's start doing that. That's a pretty good size to start with there. What up, caviar? Yeah, <laughs> right? I know it's kind of dark in here, right? Yeah, it's getting darker every day. Every day, man, I'm in the Northern Hemisphere. Oh no, your drone hit the wall? Oh, is it okay? Uh, I'm using Xcode. Xcode uses the Clang compiler. Hope you, hope you heard that there, but yeah, Xcode, Clang. I know, right? It's, it's becoming darker every day. It's not rain, it's just, uh, I guess it's because I had the window kind of closed there. It's not letting a light in right now. One more try on this. I think this, I think 100 is the ideal width. Or maybe 40, 101. No. Yeah. All right, now it's layered up like a pancake. Yeah, clang. Definitely cool. Very good job the Clang team does. And they're one of the first Clang first people to use modules too. Caviar, what's the best compiler? In my opinion, I, I like I like using Xcode myself and Clang. Oh, okay, good. Alright. Well at least at least it's not totally broken. Yeah, I would believe that because when I compile Android, it takes forever, and then Xcode compiles things really fast. So, really, <laughs> oh, that's crazy! Your Twitch is like crazy slow right now. Oh, oh, are there any indie games out right now that I know of that aren't super popular? Well, um, you've have you heard of Axiom Verge? I mean, it's probably really pop popular though. Um, Axiom Verge, you probably heard of it already though. But um, another one you could probably review is Anton Kudin's um, Megasphere. He he has an alpha version out. You could probably contact him. Oh sweet, he's got his Steam page set up now. Uh, just the compiling, yeah. Dude, he's such a good artist. Yeah, if you haven't seen um, Megasphere, you gotta check it out. In fact, I haven't even checked out their Steam page yet, or his Steam page. All right, so let's layer this thing up kind of like a cake.
Wait a minute, why is this thing so dark when I did that? Uh, uh, yeah, you can. I think you can. Oh. Oh, there's levels. That's what it is, man. Oh, well, contact him. That's what I'm saying. If you're if you're doing reviews and stuff, contact him. Say, hey, I'd like a free copy. Usually that works. All you gotta do is say, hey, look, I got a lot of YouTube subscribers or followers on my blog. Gets you free games every time, man. Oh, that's a big question you got there. They do not only work by sockets. They're, they work in many, many different ways. Hopefully someone else can help answer that. I'm not sure if I'm... But also, Trey, what, do you, what exactly are you asking here? Because it's, it's kind of a broad, such a broad question, it's difficult to answer. So, can you get more narrow, more specific about that? 